Hey all, just going live in the interim because we have Mendel Kalmanson and Aaron Baron Cohen having some technical difficulties. So um, we are gonna have them later and we'll put that on YouTube for you guys to see. But yeah, just gonna go for a couple minutes until we have Moshav. But yeah, just want to thank everybody for being a part of this. It's been <laughs> kind of stressful putting together, you know, to presenters from around the world, all the different time zones. Um, but yeah, it's been a dream. And this is for the Aliyah Neshama for my mom and uh, my kids, Bubby. My mom, Frida Livona, Bat Shalom, and my kids, Bubby. Yudas Chava, Bat Yaakov. So yeah, I'm just say a couple of things uh, in terms of last Parsha, the Chukotai. You know, it opens with Hashem. Uh, one second, Dennis, can you close the... Um, it opens with Hashem saying, you know, if you keep my statutes and you keep my commandments, Rashi has the famous question of, it sounds kind of superfluous, if you're going to keep one, like why is it mentioning basically keeping these two different times? Um, and one of the answers is really the first one really being connected and learning Torah. Like, So the, the Alter Rebbe says that the Chukotai is related to the word Chakika, which is engraving. And uh, it's really to be like in great, like when you look at the Torah and the parchment, the writing, it becomes one, but it's still, you're able to separate. Certain people can separate those letters from the parchment, but when something's engraved, it's literally one with whatever it is. So you can't separate it. And that's the idea with the first part, with Chukotai, to be completely one with the Torah. And um, as the Zohar says, the wisdom of the Torah and Hashem are one, and that's how we become completely connected. And of course, the second part is uh, keeping the mitzvot, but as we know, like learning Talmud Torah connected Kalam, so it's equal to that. And just a few lines later, we learn, you know, that we get all these blessings and one of them being rain that's already there for us. But um, the idea is to become a Kali for that. And when we get connected, then these blessings come down. So it's the same thing in life. Like all these blessings are just waiting for us and we have to be a vessel for it. It's like the law of attraction. If you get on a high level in terms of emotional level and just giving, um, the word for love and giving is, is ahava, and the root word is hav, to give. So when you get to that level, then you are aligning yourself with all these things that are already waiting for us, and we can attract those into our lives. And uh, the converse of that, just a few sukkim later in that parsha, um, you know, it says if you don't keep these things, then this and this will happen. You know, like the curses of the Tilchacha. Um, and there's actually a story of a tzaddik and his son. And his father would read, you know, every week he would read the Torah. And uh, when it comes to the Tilchacha, which is the vivid curses, so this kid's like 10 years old and it's always been totally fine. And this one time his father got sick and somebody else read it. And um, he fell to the ground and he fainted and he was out for like months. When he came to, they asked, every year you're you hear Tokacha and it's been fine. Like what happened this year? And he said, when my father reads it, I only hear blessings, but this year I heard curses. And there's a similar story with Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and he sends his son to get blessings from these two rabbis. And when his son comes back, he says, I went to the, the rabbis, but it sounded like Tokacha. It sounded more like curses. We're like, I don't understand. I thought I was going there for blessings. And Rabbi Shimon, said his father said no like those were actually blessings you just you weren't able to hear it and of course Rav Shimon the idea is that in this world these hardships that come you know especially when you're looking at it at the moment when you look at it later and you can see that this is all for the good um you know that's why hindsight's 2020 because you can look at these different things and it's like that was such a hardship and you're facing all these things that are very very difficult but later you see it's for your own good and with Rav Shimon with the Zohar, he was able to connect to that concealment, to that element of truth that we really don't see in this life. And that's how he was able to see it for his son. And the Alter Rebbe also shares that Tokacha ultimately is is good. And you know that we aren't able to see it, but when we get to that level of trust and have that emunah and can go into that bitachon, that we understand that, okay, all of these things are for the good and we have to have full trust that these things aren't happening to us, they're happening for us, and it's just part of this journey and this path that we're on, um, then we're able to appreciate. And it's really about being present. 
like in romantic relationships, if you've been lucky enough and you're like looking at your partner and you guys are really in the same space and you can see that love and you feel it and you're like happier than you've ever been, the reason for that is because you're completely present in that moment. And when you're going through, you know, you have anxiety or you're sad about something, it's because you're not present in the moment. You're worrying about something it should have been, it could have been, or something that might happen. It's, you're not existing in those moments. And of course that's easier said than done to be in that space, but really it does come from fueling these, your life in these moments with faith as opposed to fueling it with fear. And once we're able to master that and being present in the moment, then we could find happiness. And that is really the idea of the Don't Block Your Blessings project, which Light of Infinite came from that. And um, there was a letter in Mendel Kalmanstein, I'm gonna put him on later, probably on our YouTube channel, because he's having some technical difficulties, like I mentioned. But he's in conversation with Aaron Baron Cohen, who's Sasha Baron Cohen's brother. He does all the music for, from Ali G to all the different projects they've been doing. He's, he's amazing, we've met up and did music in a bunch of different countries together. He's just incredible, so I'm excited to myself to watch it, but also for you guys to see it. Um, Mendel Kelmanson, one of the books he wrote is Positivity Bias, and it's by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, like not by, but like inspired by, and a lot of us have this sort of negativity bias, which is for self-preservation and to just look at things and protect ourselves and tap into our ego or tap into something that might have happened so that we could avoid getting hurt. But the Rebbe was like a master in the positivity bias, which was shifting to, you know, to a space of positivity and really just looking at the positive in everything so that you can exist in this space of love and light. And somebody had written the Rebbe in this book, um, or it was highlighted in this book. And he was, you know, sort of, you mentioned he had kids and he has his wife and, you know, just everything in his life. But then he was complaining about these different things. And the, the Rebbe, his response was a bit of tochakai, I guess, but he was saying, you know, not to downplay the hardships in your life, but the way in which you're writing, I could tell that you don't appreciate the blessings that you have. And until you do appreciate the blessings that you have, you're not necessarily gonna receive more blessings. And the idea is to become, like I said, that Kaylee, that vessel for these blessings to bring more into your life. So I'm excited for you guys to hear them. We have Moshe Shavban up next. And we're going till 9.30 PST. Um, we started at eight in the morning so that all the people in Israel could do it. And yeah, just so thankful for you all for tuning in and um, keep checking out. I put out these weekly Divrei Torah um, and you could jump on the WhatsApp to join or just check out the Instagram or whatever. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much.